So a self-portrait and illustrator. I'm going to keep all the defaults on. I just opened a new letter size print file. And if I just use the pen tool, that is the standard, most common image making tool in Illustrator. So like in the video I showed you, if I use the pen tool, which is based on a fountain pen, if I click down, let's say I want to make my hair. If I click, I get an anchor point, and then I can lift. It doesn't matter if I'm using a mouse or a stylus. And if I click again, I can have a straight line, a straight path. If I click and drag, I can pull out these bezier handles, and the top of my head is curved. So I'll give myself a little bit of a curve, and then I can move up to another curve. Then I can go back to a straight if I want, give myself a little bit of a calic, make this into a curve by dragging it out, go to another curve that kind of rounds it out, <coughs> to a curve going the other way, and on and on, and kind of make the shape of my hair with straight lines or with curves, depending on how I use this pen tool. And don't worry, they're, they're all editable. So I have a little widow's peak. If I don't feel like I get that quite right, I can go back and adjust all these anchors and all these curves later. But in this method of using the pen tool, this was in the very first versions of Illustrator, a long time ago, even before my college days. When I get to the end of the path, you know, I'll go back a step so you can see that. When I get to the end of the path, you'll see that a little circle shows up um, with my pen tool. And that means that I'm closing the path. That's like if I'm cutting a, a shape out of a piece of paper, I'm getting back to where I started the cut. It's going to close the path and give me a cutout. Okay. So now if I go to what's called the selection tools, right, the arrows, in Photoshop we had one black arrow, and it was the move tool. And the I call the black arrow here the large selection tool, and the white arrow the small selection tool. And it's really called the direct selection tool. But what I mean by small is if I want to select just an individual curve, or an individual anchor point to move it, to adjust it, I use the small selection tool. And that allows me to edit my path. You can see how helpful that is. But if I use the large selection tool, it will give me control of the entire closed path, right? Which allows me to transform it. There is no transform command like the one you're used to, free transform anyway like you're used to in Photoshop. Instead, there is the large selection tool and the ability to stretch it, the ability to rotate it, the ability to flip it on its <laughs> axis, on its axis, right? Okay, now let me show you what it's like to work outside of what's called the artboard. This white rectangle that's letter size that we created is completely arbitrary because we're not creating pixel-based stuff. So instead, I want you to drag your self-portrait off into the gray so that you can see the difference between a white fill and an empty fill. So right now, I have a white fill on my path. So it's white paper, but it has a black stroke on it, which means that it's like black paper, but I'm wringing the outside of it with a black Sharpie. And any new path I build will use those same features. Okay, now that's making my self-portrait with the pen tool only. I close a lot of different paths, give myself a nose. And you can see how it's filling. I want to make sure to close them all. It's filling with white as I go. But what if I want it to, to not be filled with white? That's my upper lip. Here's my lower lip. I get sick of curves sometimes, so I'll just do it very Max Headroom style. Right? 
What if I want to fill that shape with another color? I can do that, right? Or what if I want it to be empty? So if I hit this little none fill box, which is new, not in Photoshop, then it is an empty path, but it still has a stroke on it, right? So you see the gray coming through. So let's focus on the stroke. Going to zoom in with the same navigation tricks, command uh, plus sign zooms in. When I'm looking at the stroke, I'm dealing with this box, and it has certain properties, right? I can choose its color. I can also choose its thickness. I can even in some ways choose if it's um, calligraphic or not, goes thick to thin or not. So that can be a lot of fun. And what I, what I do with that is I use these stroke options at the top. So if I take this stroke, for instance, let me select, let's see, all of these and I set the stroke size to be bigger, like six point, like fonts, but instead of being uniform, I make it wavy, and instead of being basic, I make it oval, then I get something that looks a little bit more like it was drawn with a marker, where it goes thick to thin. Then if this one I want to have an empty fill, I can do that. If I want to apply that same stroke setting to another shape, I can use, I can select it with the large selection tool and then use the eyedropper tool and just click on the one I want. And I thought that would copy my strokes over, maybe because they're not in the foreground. Let's see if I can get them to. Weird. But I can set my strokes to wavy and to oval, and then it will look like it's drawn with the marker, right? But I have a problem here. I have to edit this anchor point, which has a handle way off the range, and bring that handle back in order to, to not have that weird outline. So that's how the pen tool works. That's how strokes work. My favorite way of making shapes is not this way, of making closed paths. My favorite way is using what's called the blob brush. So not the paintbrush tool, but the blob brush tool, which is a newer tool in Illustrator. Now it's going to make filled paths. So I want to reverse this. So instead of having a black stroke and an empty fill, I want to have a black fill and an empty stroke. So I'm going to use this little reverse or swap icon. And then I'm going to double click on the blob brush and set its settings. And because I'm using a tablet, I can actually set the size to be pressure sensitive. And let's make it pretty dramatic. Let's make it 20 point with a variation of 15 points. Right? I can also set it to be more accurate or more smooth. I'm going to set it just on the smooth side, but not all the way. Now I can just paint with it. So I can paint my hair. The harder I press, the bigger it will get. And then it will snap it into a vector shape, which is a path made of anchors. But you see how it made the curves for me. And because it's a blob brush tool, it gave me a path on the inside and the outside of the cutout. So if I swapped this to a stroke, it would look like that. And then I could set the stroke size. And those are my usual settings if I play with stroke. A five point oval, about a five point stroke width, but have it be wavy, not uniform. Well, that doesn't make as much sense as this. Oh, i got to select it first. So we're going to play with it. 
I'm going to just finish off my self-portrait really quickly using the blob brush because it's fun to use and it's pretty easy. Whoops. I can even kind of scribble and it will turn it into vectors for me. Notice how it's cleaning up my curves as I go. And these are the things that people who love vectors just love about it. And so I encourage you to play with it, get it to where you want. I'm going to select all of these individual paths, hold down shift and add to them, and swap them to match this. Well, they're all filled paths now. And then I'm going to go back to my blob brush. And draw in a jawline. and fill in my ears. Show my age a little bit. And give myself a neck. And mess with my hair. And even give myself stubble. Now this is not very clean, right? So the blob brush is great when you just want to make shapes quickly. And basically it becomes a sketchbook. But the difference is each mark I make is an individual filled path. And what's great about the blob brush is it's like magic scissors. I can just add to it anytime I want and make it complicated. <laughs> so now when I select it, now this is a very complex vector shape which would be really hard to make with just the pen tool, right? But I can still edit each individual anchor should I want to, to make it into what I want. I can open up the space. So it's a powerful tool. It's going to take some getting used to, but it has advantages that we definitely want. So I'm going to... Well, I'll, I'll finish up this demo. Uh, let me show you the shape tools and then the pencil tool. So if you want to build your self-portrait like you did your shape exercise, you can use a collection of pre-built shapes, right? That's too big. Let's see. So for my hair, like maybe I'll do an oval like that, and then another oval like ah, another oval like this. Then use the large selection tool and scale it. There's no warp tool in the same way. But in this way, um, Illustrator is really good at making kind of perfect geometrical things happen and perfect symmetry happen if you want that. And then for eyes, I might, I might use circles. So I'll hold down shift while I make my ellipse. All right. For my nose, maybe I'll use a rounded rectangle. And then maybe a 
polygon that is